Hi, and welcome to the You've Changed podcast. My name is Kate Barron, and today I'm here with Mr. Red Richardson. Hello. The very talented comedian, actor, podcaster, writer, Mm -hmm. man of mystery. Yeah. With a beautiful mustache. Thank you very much. How long have you had this mustache? I got it in lockdown. I thought you were going to say, like, I had it since I was a child. No, no. I didn't have it when I first met you. Really? I got it in lockdown. All, I can only picture you with it's a mustache. It's now. I think I can't get rid of it. No, it's very I thought you. thought of changing it now. Is I did it as a joke, and then I stayed for a day, and I was like, this is quite fun. And Does I, your wife like it? No. She what? Thought, she thought I was gonna, we got married. She thought I was going to shave it for the wedding. I said, no. <laughs> if I this, like if it. If this goes, you go. <laughs> you <laughs> should mean. do that. You should absolutely do that. Yeah. Threaten her with it. Shave a little bit at a time, <laughs> yeah. and then that's her countdown <laughs> to when you're going to fucking Now leave you have her. to leave. <laughs> now you have to leave, girl. Sorry about that. How are you? <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. Good. How are you doing? I'm good. What's what's happening? What's new with you? Give me a... What is new? I have joined a boxing gym, a boxing club boxing this week. Boxing is supposed to be like the best workout. Mm. I, I've, I've done boxing a couple of times, but it's supposed to be the hands-down best workout of your yeah, life. It's great. I, yeah, the one just opened down the road for me. What is it called? Bronx Boxing Gym. Is it like all... Because the boxing gyms I have gone to have been like, girls, punch, punch, kick, slap them. But are you like at a bro gym? It's, no, there's... I can't remember what the... Like a um, proper boxing gym? There's a, there's a girls' session called like the Girl Dem Shakeout or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's that. But like in That's the daytimes, it's just empty. So I don't actually do any... I just hit the punch bag. But you don't have anyone training you to do it properly. Well, you can go to classes. Yeah. But at the moment, I'm going to go to classes. But then, then the classes are from like four, no, five mm. till and which time I'm usually going to a gig. Yeah, of course. So from like 6 a.m. till four, it's just empty. And you can just so go. So 6 a.m. to four, that's when you're training. Yeah, All day, yeah. every day, you're going to be well, like no. fucking shredded. I, I go for like 45 minutes. What if you it lose kills. your funny when you get like too shredded? I don't know. We'll have to deal with that. I don't think that will happen. <laughs> That's cool. Are you like what other or is that like your big your fitness goal? Do you have like is that your new? I want to lose like a stone. You know what I mean? Or yeah. two possibly. Yeah. Because I, yeah, I just feel like out of shape and starting comedy. I just got so much fatter than I was before. Oh, I just think we're like on the road all the time. Yeah. You're eating at fucking weird eat like hours. Shit. Like you eat like shit, and then when you're out, like the clubs and stuff will be like, oh, here's a free meal, but their yeah. meal is like fried chicken or yeah, pizza yeah. or fries. Yeah. Like it's not actual food. And anything around you is either noodles. I can't eat before I go on. Neither can I. Yeah. I do not know how comedians, no. like I used to gig with a comic in Toronto and he would go to the club and his like meal, he would order a huge plate of pasta, eat it before he went on. I'm like, even if you just sit on the stool, don't you just feel yeah, like bloated and like shit. weighted down? Yeah, like yeah, I need yeah, to yeah, feel, yeah. maybe just cause I'm like very hyper on stage. Like I need to feel like I can bounce around and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just can't do that. No, I feel bloated and weird and knackered and you because even i do something where it's really weird before i go on i i always have like a mint but i like to brush my teeth before i go on spray my perfume i Wait, know you I brush can't... your teeth at the club yeah i always what? brush my teeth at the club i have a toothbrush and toothpaste in my bag right now i always have it wait w- that's why because it's like it's not even like if something's in my teeth it's like this, this you know when you just feel like Okay, fresh breath. Like that's yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need to have that sensation or like pop it in also right before I go on. Like, um, just to have not for when I'm on stage, so it's like falling out of my mouth. I once went on stage with gum in my mouth and it was like the most traumatic ten minutes of my life. Because I was like, do. I didn't know what to do, and I was trying to like tuck it in, but like tell the jokes I could feel it falling out. Yeah, I just felt yeah, like everyone yeah. can see. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah, I but, but I, where so you must do that in the because there's I do it in disgusting. There's no clubs. private toilets, like the comedy store no. has a private toilet for the comedy store is a private once I've done it in there uh, like some of them they have green rooms right Top like secret doesn't so you must Top walk in in the public bathroom downstairs and you're just brushing your teeth and then yeah. you've got to go and take the piss they out have... somebody's just seen you brush your teeth in a public toilet yeah but it's in the girls has anyone ever said what fuck you you just I just saw you brushing your teeth no I just think they think like oh that homeless girl looks pretty put together yeah and, and then I'm you like... get on stage and they go okay yeah oh she's actually pretty unhinged yeah 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 <laughs> no but that's just yeah it must be is that weird I think it's weird yeah. I brushed my teeth in like public bathrooms before yeah that's I, I get that, but I, I think like if you're doing a long distance journey. But I mean, and then you they brush don't know how teeth. far I've come. <laughs> just yeah. from East London. And mint London. isn't enough. No, I just something about sometimes mints can be enough, but like I, I'm going to tell you something that you're probably going to think this is gross. Mm. If I've ever been in a situation where the club is like packed, I can't get in the bathroom, I just really need to brush my teeth. Sometimes I've like gone around the corner and I've just like had a bottle of water and drank it and then like spit it and like brush my teeth. Is that disgusting? <laughs> no, it's, it's hygienic. Because on the sidewalk is disgusting to me. Yeah. Like it makes me gag. But it's hygienic. It's, not, it's, it's just more of a, it's more strange, I think. Than is that? 
How many times a day are you brushing your teeth then? No, like only like two or three. Okay. Like a normal, but if it's like if I have a gig and I feel like I'm like, oh, I ate like a couple of hours ago or I had like I had like a coffee, like I had a coffee before I came here. I was at Joe and the Juice. Mm. Shout out Joe and the Juice. Nice. They sponsor me. Love it. Do they? And I, no, no, I wish, wish. they sponsored yeah, 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 me. They're yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, they're good. You need to try. Are you a fan of them? Yeah, I've had a few. I've have, had a few. They have a sandwich that blew up on TikTok called the Tuna Cato. Okay. And it's just, it's just a fucking tuna sandwich, but it is the best tuna sandwich I've ever had in my life. Okay. Yeah. Highly recommend. But I was just there and I was like working and I had coffee. And then I was like coming down here. And I'm like, I need to brush my teeth. So I went to the bathroom and I brushed my teeth right before I came here because I just needed to be fresh for you. Fair enough. You know, I know they can't smell it, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's, it's better than stinking. Oh my god, I have you ever done spank in Edinburgh? Yeah. Okay, so spank is like for anyone who doesn't know it, it's a crazy gig. People get naked. It's like a party gig. It's super fun to do. It's retired now. It's no longer happening. However. I like they give somebody an opportunity every night to get mm. naked and, and promote shout, something. Spank. And they shout spank. I love it. Or you love it. Mm. And um they give somebody an opportunity, you promote if you get naked on stage. There was a comic, I'm not gonna say who, I'll tell you after. Mm-hmm. Um, who got naked to promote his show on stage. He smelled worse than anyone I think I've ever smelled in my entire what, life. What just his breath, everything. No, his whole everything about him oh. dunk. And I had they, they kind of throw your their clothes at you, and then we had to pass them to the yeah, stage managers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, Ugh! and I was like trying not to gag as he was getting his stinking, disgusting body was getting naked in front of me, and I was like gagging and trying yeah. to pass them to the stage manager. It was awful. I remember going and hiding in the that little green room bit. Yeah, they were doing the naked promo, and I was just like, I was stood with like eight guys just staring at this naked woman. I just thought. I don't know. This is something weird about this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I yeah. went and just went back to think. Anyway, she came back with um, the guy who runs it, and he was like, "Mate, you need to get out, get out." I was like, "Yeah." So it looked like I'd been hiding in the green room because she come was coming like in to change, and yeah. I was like, "No, I'm actually doing the opposite." Oh my god! There was just something. I just looked to the guy next to me, just looking at, her, and I went, "This is, you know what I mean?" Like <sighs> when you feel like, "Yeah." <laughs> I love the idea of it, but then it you has- know, it's. It's always who the people who want to get naked are never the ones you want to fucking see naked. No. That's just generally how it is. It's like when you go to a nude beach or oh, go yeah, to like yeah. a swingers party. Not that I've ever been to a swingers party, but it's like the types of people who go are just the ones you're like, I don't want to fucking yeah, see Yeah, it'd be an old man or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's, it's um, the thing with that, it was a great fun show. It it's was just fun. in the current climate, it was a disaster yeah. waiting to happen. But so fucked as well that in Edinburgh, like, okay, so they were doing that. Someone's getting naked every night. And then that other comic got naked and people are like, whoa, mm. but this is the Pleasance. We yeah, don't do yeah, that here. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. are better than that. This is the art and theater. Yeah, no, it was <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh, my God. You so, hosted that, though, didn't you? Did I what? You I hosted, hosted. Yeah, you were hosted Spank. I hosted loads of Spank. Um, was that knackering doing that with your show in Edinburgh? Because it's, what, 1 a.m. till 3 a.m. and then you're doing your show. Every day. You're doing it like midnight, midnight till around two thirty in the morning every day. Um, I hosted a bunch of them, and I got to be on their very final ever one at McEwen Hall in the big, huge. Oh, theater. nice! It was lovely, and honestly, the team who runs it and puts it together, like the nicest. Yeah, really good people. Best. James is great. Oh my god, James, Corey, Ali, Gray, like mm. just the nicest, fucking coolest people ever. James Loveridge, great guy. He was the like, host of it for a long time. Yeah, he hosted it for one. I got to do his final Friday night with him, and I was on the one at McEwen Hall where James and James yeah. um, did it together. It was just, it was lovely. So I was really happy to do it, but it was fucking exhausting. Man. Yeah, but in Edinburgh, I was doing like six shows a day because I was hosting for Johnny Walker, hosting for Spank, doing my own show, doing my fucking own spot. Hell. I was that's why I was on the knackered. verge of tears at all times up there. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of work. Yeah, I remember I saw you right at the start of Fringe yeah. after that reviewer had come in and you had tech issues and they were yeah. like Matt, three stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mic didn't work, so I had to do the whole show without the mic. Sort of, it was fucking ridiculous. He said the show is brilliant. His tagline said the best story you'll see in comedy. And I thought he's five starred me. I yeah. clicked on the link and it was uh, three. And he said there was uh, too many hiccups. But didn't mention that the mic didn't work. <laughs> on like a rehearsal day too, right? Yeah, Isn't it, was it, the, like, it was a rehearsal day. It's a yeah. rehearsal day. Mm. And it's not your fault the mic didn't work. Somebody who I know who's an author mm. um, got a one star review for his book because the woman said she bought it and couldn't figure out how to download it on her Kindle. That's, one in, that's star. insane. That's so You fault. shouldn't be able to do that. One star yourself for that, like, you know. Yeah. But she managed to sort it out to write a fucking scathing review. Yeah, of course. Of Those course. people need to be punched in the throat. Yeah, yeah. It's not good. Did you, um, 
Did you have to get naked at Spank then? Because James Fuck is... Fuck no. Oh, my God. No, they, you, no, The old no. hosts used to do that. If no one would do it, I, they'd get naked. I know, but I was like, absolutely not. Like, mm. for real, no. So was there nights when no one got naked? No, we never had a night like that. We had a night where it almost happened, but then at the break, there was like some comic who was like oh i'm willing to do it more often than not we had too many people who would come up to us at the break and go can i can i and then you sort of do like a who do we have but you already have like planted you already know who's gonna do it mm. and then like one guy was like really keen to do it and we've mm. already had somebody else offer and then they were like there's something about him that yeah, just he yeah. like he wants it too so much badly. like he wants to babysit these kids too hard yeah yeah, yeah we yeah. don't want to let yeah, him do yeah. it anyone who wants it too much you're like no no, he's probably he's, he's probably going to do a naked promo on the night bus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, for no, real. No one's asked for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the fucking bus I'd catch. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're here to talk about change. Change. Give me, give me something. Talk to me. It doesn't need to be big. It can be something small, but like anything that sort of altered your path in your life and and whatever you wanted to be. What's something that's? I was going to say boxing, but I've only done it twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's but really changed. It, everything. I feel, I feel changed. Um, no, I don't know. I might quit next week. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. I think starting comedy was the biggest change in my life. Starting stand up. Yeah, that's a big deal. It changed everything uh, for me. I started when I was twenty five. That's young. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it? Some people start like 18. You go, I can't. Some people. I knew a girl who started when she was like 16. I'm I like, know, it's have crazy. the balls to do that so young. Like, good for you. I was still like such an awkward idiot. I wouldn't know what idiot to... With no life experience. I think May Martin was like 14 or something. I admire Ridiculous. that so much. Yeah, it's crazy. So 25. What were you doing before then? So I did everything. I, I was a labourer. I worked in pubs. I did a history degree at uni, but I went to just literally fuck around, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, most people go to. I went to school. I I went to three different colleges mm. over five years and got zero degrees. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I got a two two. But it was like idiot. I just wanted the loan and I wanted to yeah. fucking meet people who weren't from my hometown. You know all what I, mean? I did was get into debt. That's all yeah. college did for me was fucking throw me into debt. And, and I haven't I paid any like, of it back. <laughs> no, why would you pay any of it back? No, when that can hang over your head, I know. why wouldn't you want that? Of course, of course. God. But it's, um, yeah, no, so what did I do? I used to write scripts, I used to write films when I was a kid, like like short movies That's with cool. my mates. We'd make them when I was like 16 at school. Oh, so you've always wanted to sort of be in this world. Yeah, well, I've always loved comedy, you know, and, but I, it's weird, I wasn't like, I used to watch like Will Ferrell movies and stuff. I knew nothing about stand-up. I'd seen Eddie Murphy, Raw and Delirious. Yeah, we all did. Right? And I didn't, I thought stand-up was like, because in this country, it was very just sort of, it felt churned out. And there was like, you know, this is the Christmas DVD of this guy. And they'd go, it'd be like, Lenny Plonker, the funniest man in the country. And there'd be an advert. And, you know, stand-up adverts are the worst. Yes. They'd be like, and she said, oh, and they go, it's hilarious. <laughs> and it cuts to the other bits. And it's like, this is dumb. Yeah. Just show one joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just play a joke. But and they go, can't. No. And not real stuff. And, and then it cuts them like running stuff. around the stage. You're know, like, this guy looks like the biggest cunt in the world. <laughs> yeah, and he is. Um, yeah, probably is, you know. Um, probably not allowed to perform anymore. Yeah. But like, yeah, so it was, I'd watched Eddie Murphy. I was like, this is unbelievable yeah. to see. And I remember like not knowing, I remember watching like, seeing occasionally live at the Apollo and not, I thought they, I didn't know there was a circuit here. So I thought they'd like, would film themselves and send a tape in. Mm. You know, I mean, how else would you know? Yeah. It's such a weird secretive world. I thought you had to be famous. Like when I saw Eddie Murphy raw and delirious, I was like, oh my God. But I thought you had to be famous to do comedy. Yeah. So unless you became really famous, you couldn't I thought it was like a transition thing. Of course. But you had to get the fame and acting in first. And then you could be the stand up. And then you could do stand up. I didn't yeah. think you could just go stand up. I did not know anything like an open mic or circuit. No, or not at all. Any circuit. And I don't know if that's good or like, I don't think we should have a circuit. I think it's, what? No, I think let's have clubs. Let's mm. just not speak to each other. No, I don't. I mean, the good, <laughs> there's good people like you. But you know when you're just like, why? You're not in this. Yeah. Fuck off. We're not in a group together, you know? Yeah. And you, just some people you meet. But, like, I remember doing my first open mic at Angel. And then oh, I did wow, what, a really horrible one. Because I, I, for first year of stand-up, I gigged, like, once a month. I didn't know that so was did so I. many... Gigs. I literally gigged once a month, and then I was like, oh, bitch, you'll be famous in no time. I genuinely, I thought I I, didn't my know. first gig went really well. I thought it did at the time. If I listen back to it now, yeah. I'm sure I'll be like, oh, so four cringe. people laughed, you know. <laughs> yeah. But I remember going, fuck. Yeah. And um, I thought, this is it. Yeah. Like, in three weeks, someone's just going to come up and go, America, you know? Um, America. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but that is what you think. But how good is that feeling? 
I remember the first time I got behind the mic after I did my first set again, open mic, whatever, mm. probably however many people laughed, whatever. I felt like it went really well, but it was the sense of going, holy shit, this is what I'm supposed yeah, to be yeah, doing. Yeah, it was incredible. I've never, yeah. that my, my life is a pre and after moment. And that's, I yeah. judge everything by, because it changed everything. And it's the best, you feel like, oh, this is something I'm good at. And I love to do. I, I like, and also I'm joking, I you know, enjoy hanging out with comedians and stuff like that. Yeah. But you know, just sometimes when someone writes something on Twitter yeah. and you go, we're not, you know, me and my fellow people on the circuit, it's like, we don't do the same, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, no, I thought this is great. And it just, everything changed, my whole entire life, obsession. You know what I mean? I just loved it, yeah. I still do. And it was just this new world that it, you'd like opened a door to something that just didn't exist before, you know? Yeah. Everyone I know now is because of comedy. I'm Everywhere say, I go is because of comedy. Same with me. Do yeah. you find your like circle of friends and everything has changed? You can, yeah, yeah. And I've still got mates that are like before comedy, but you know, it's less so because it's I, hard. I'm right? not yeah. And like one of my best mates, um, a guy called Harry, he's like his job is he goes and like film stuff. Mm. So we've sort of stayed friends, um, got you know, great guy, but like I'm more go it, it's also because like He's away a lot. Mm. I, I've not, I slowly missed out on the, oh, we're meeting Friday, Saturday. People stop calling you for that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also your whole mind changes and you hang out with a load of people who don't understand. You go, oh my God, this person just got done for this in comedy. They, they don't know you. And you, you go, yeah. fuck, I need to speak to the people who know about this. Yeah, you yeah. Know I need to mean? talk shit with people who yeah. know how to talk shit about But them. you go, oh, this place. And you do it. And they just, your whole, because it becomes your entire life. It has to. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to do it. If you're really into it. And again, like you're saying, everywhere you go, like people are like, you know, in London, I feel like I don't even go anywhere in London or anywhere else in the country unless if there's a gig there, that's yeah, when I go there. Of course. I've been to Windsor, which I hear is a beautiful city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to Windsor like six times for that Fuzzy Bear gig. At Have night. you ever done it? Uh, no. At <laughs> night. I've never seen it during the day. I get off the train, go downstairs, yeah. do the gig, get on the train, go back. That's why I've lived here for four yeah, years. Well, now crazy. she lives in the ground. But yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I thought she was shit. dead. She is Are dead. you okay? Oh, my God. No, I can't go through this. <laughs> Dead. I had a hypnotherapist um, convince me she was still alive because I took it so bad. Oh my god, I caught a picture. I'm just out of it. I caught a picture of King Charles's hands again the other day. Oh it's just, yeah, they're atrocious. They're bad. I feel bad for him because what's funny? There's something. If it was, I'm sorry. I hate to be the guy, but if it was another part of the body and he, he was a woman. <laughs> He would oh. not be allowed to. <laughs> Could you imagine if a the woman had Guardian those... articles about her hands and yeah. you know what I mean? It just wouldn't. Imagine if people were going on about Megan's hands. Like yeah. Charles's hands are gross. I'm up for it, but it's like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's what's funny about women that get is... picked apart for every single other thing. So I think people yeah. hang on to the get one the thing. Hands. It's like Megan Fox. You know the how people have you ever heard about her thumbs? No. So Megan Fox, one of the most beautiful women in the world. She's yeah. stunning. I don't think anyone looks at her thumbs, you know. Literally everyone wants to fuck her, but because people just need to find something, people go look at her thumbs. They, she has toe thumbs. What? She literally has <laughs> toe so thumbs. That's so funny. And they look, they just, they're like short and wide, and they look like little toes. Okay. And everyone goes, but look at those toe thumbs. I'm like, she's the most fuckable yeah, woman in the world. No guy is going to go, I'm sorry. I just, the thumbs, <laughs> the thumbs I can't do. <laughs> You wouldn't turn her out of bed because <laughs> yeah, uh. she had toe thumb. <laughs> it's just you need. But a, I swear, you need a thing. thumb job. <laughs> you need a thumb job, ooh baby. <laughs> yeah, no, he's getting a he get he's getting a lot of shit. They are gross, but it's probably a mental, um, not mental, mental physical thing. problem. Well, I think he had, does have mental problems, but, but he's no, probably I'll, got no, but, swollen his of course, blood there's, pressure there's or something. There's some sort of physiological issue for yeah, it. Yeah, but and it's we just, would just call him sausage fingers. In because Richmond. also he's like such a fucking cunt to people. And did you hear his? Like I heard something where his old someone who used to work for him was like, there was something where the queen had sent him something like a letter mm. and then he had accidentally knocked it into his pristinely shined and polished silver bin beside his desk and he made the guy come over bend over pick it up put it back on the table for him because he would not bend over to pick it out of the trash considering that people who used to do his job would cut people's heads off i, <laughs> I, I think that's still progress from what that, okay, yeah, fair. <laughs> from where he's from fair that is, that <laughs> no is i get you progress. and there's a whole thing with him signing the thing and he was like this fucking pen. He's such yeah, chat. Yeah, and that yeah. was the whole Twitter video on that. It's I don't know why anyone wants to be. Well, they don't have a choice, but it's a yeah. horrible life.
Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's like a fishbowl kind of life. But I mean, I if somebody was like, here's a bajillion dollars, you just need to shut up and look pretty and not have opinions, I'd be like, I could do that. Yeah. After having this many years of my life being broke and having opinions, of course. I'm okay with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And I you just talk on. at home. Yeah, exactly. Just, just get drunk in the bar. Imagine the shit talk that happens in yeah. that palace. Everyone's got an NDA signed, oh so God. you just go, look, Beautiful. I'll say what I want about anything. <laughs> yeah, we actually almost, uh, I worked for a company that does like, they go into corporate environments. Like we'd have like big like tech companies and stuff. They'd call us and they go like, we need to do like, team building workshops and things like that, or like leadership training. Mm. And I got a call once from Buckingham Palace, like uh, one of the people who worked there. And she's like, yeah, we're having some issues. <laughs> Basically all the staff are fighting constantly or were at the time and like not getting along and there was all these issues. Yeah. And I, we didn't get the job, but I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna make an excuse. So I have to be there as well. Like what I would give to be in there where they're all like, fuck you. No. I thought and you were gonna say finally. team building, meaning like, because of Megan and you were going to have to go. Oh my in God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Megan's doing a trust fall with the queen. Yeah. Well, the queen <laughs> rings and goes, I don't know how to speak to black people. Can you, can you, can you come in and tell us? Yeah, we'll us? play some improv games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what you don't do. Yeah. You, you yes and. <laughs> yeah. her. Yes, you are black. Yes and. Yeah. You are a person. That's right. Good job, Queenie. Oh my God. Yeah. That's Harry's so about to have a live therapy session. Fuck. Could you he, remember? when he left, first off i was like good for you yeah then there was the oprah interview which i this is the whole thing there's a problem now is you can't find them both tragically no sorry not tragic like fur infuriatingly annoying yeah um because there's the whole there's the bad racist stuff that the paper's doing but sh can we separate them? Yeah. She is so annoying, and yeah. so is he. And calculated. Yeah. She's very smart and very calculated. Yeah. Is she super annoying? Well, South Park nailed it, right? They were like, here's a world tour for our privacy. Of course. Like, that's, they just fucking nailed it on the head. She's that's fucking, what it is. and he's a douche as well. He's, did you see Tez um, Ilias, or is it Elias or Ilias? Ilias. Ilias. Tez Ilias's joke that he just put up on Twitter. No. Because it was titled Shamima Begum. Mm. And then it was like, I think, and it was, it's a great fucking joke. So anyone listening, go watch it. But basically, he just does this whole thing. If you leave this country, you're shit talking it. You want to get out of here. You don't want your passport. I don't think those people should be allowed back. And that's why, like, fuck Prince Harry. Basically, he does this whole big rant. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it's a great good. bit. Yeah, no, she, I just, I watched the um, Oprah thing and there was that bit with the rescue chickens and then she just looks up and goes, I just like to rescue things. And you just go, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. And it's just like, were you silent? Or silent. Were you, yeah, yeah, were you just silent like, or were you and you, silent? Uh, and then he's such the a drama. fucking gimp. They like I, <laughs> I haven't heard that word I in know. a long time. I said it on a podcast earlier. And I thought great... I haven't said that for ages. Oh, because I just think of when I think of gimp, I think of the pulp fiction. Yeah, gimp yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. No, um and his whole sort of the the I don't know what he wants. Do you know what I mean? It's it's bizarre. Yeah. What do I don't want? even think he knows what he wants. I think he is being led on a leash by her. Yeah. And going, this is what we're doing. And I don't know that they know what's happening 20 mm. steps ahead of them. Yeah. I think they're kind of, I think they did. And then it got to a point where they're just now. And they're bigger. all like, they're, because the whole thing is like, oh, we had to leave. But then it actually you hear him talk. The more he talks, the more trouble he gets them both in. Because well, he's like, why do we need to know that your dick was frostbitten yeah, on your brother's wedding? Yeah. Like, no one cares. Also saying, oh, my brother was drunk on the morning of his wedding. It's like, you're an absolute snitch. Like, yeah, all, like that kind even of if shit. he is leaking stuff, all he says is your wife's unpleasant. You know what I mean? It's not. And you know, all families have that. Yeah. I fight with my brother-in-law. Like, it's just shit happened. And it is surprise, surprise, there was an elderly person in the royal family yeah. who isn't woke. And yeah. asked a fucking stupid question. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's every family. This is not an expose. Oh. No one's surprised. No, yeah, literally. You know, that she is wears diamonds that were mined from other countries by yeah. child slut. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is the why were you surprised that someone <laughs> at Buckingham Palace wasn't quite up to, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's bizarre. But I don't know how we got into that. I know. I was just thinking this has become like a royal bashing. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about your comedy change. So change, yeah. Give me something. So comedy has like completely changed you. Yes. Do you feel at all when you're on stage like a responsibility at all to have certain material? Or do you feel like, because I feel sometimes that 
there's not often people are in a room, like hundreds of people in a room or whatever, mm. listening to you, not on their phones. Do you feel like any sort of responsibility, like you have a voice, everyone's listening to you, you need to say something more. You need to say something no. worth saying. You're just like, no, f- no I want to have fucking fun. I want to make people laugh. Yeah, that's it. That's the only sound I want to hear. I don't even like if you, I had a joint uh, cut because you get clapping at the end and I just went, no, nah, this is stupid. Oh, it was like because you make preachy. a point. It gets laughs up until you make a point, and then they clap, and you go, "Actually, there's no. It's not a laugh than a clap. It's just a clap." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get rid of that. No, I don't feel any response. I just feel my responsibility is to make them laugh. I, I there's too I much like, of that in comedy where it's like I'm gonna say something. It's like, well, go to Speaker's Corner or be- join a charity. Yeah, but off. This no, is no. I mean, I want to say stuff, but then it ultimately, I just want to make people laugh. Yeah, and I want to make. But like, what are you fucking- gonna say? Drink water. <laughs> <laughs> Hydrate, guys. Seriously. Yeah, have you seen Megan Fox's thumbs? That's yeah, what I would yeah, say. yeah, but that's funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My thing is ultimately like fucking life is hard. Mm. You know, things are shitty. People do just want an escape and they want to laugh. Do I sometimes want to say something a little bit more? Or like sometimes I like it when I can see comics take a really complex topic and they break it down and they make it really funny, but yeah, they're ultimately yeah, yeah. saying something. Yeah. That's more what I like. I don't want to preach just for preaching's sake. No, if you make a point and make a laugh. And, but you but have to make the it The joke should always funny. be f- the before the point. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, going like, to like an Edinburgh show and then it's just all preachy. Yeah. There's no jokes and people are like, bravo. I'm like, an what hour the of fuck? jokes and no points is always better than our points with no jokes because <laughs> Ooh, yes i love that yeah that so, is fucking true and i would everyone would rather have an hour of jokes. yeah because and people come for it i don't think I, there's a weird thing in the industry where it's like actually because you know there was like the success of nanette and stuff but that the point yeah. of that was that it was the only one yeah, and then, and now then everyone's and done it, everyone but, did it, and yeah. that the, the that whole show was so big because it was someone going ah, I mean you can't do that twice. Yeah, yeah. Because if you go, I'm quitting comedy, I don't have to yeah. make you laugh, and then every show becomes then it's not comedy anymore. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, 100%. And it was surprising, yeah. but I think once you. I'm just bored. I don't want to hear what a comedian thinks because usually they've stolen it off Twitter or like skim read a Noam Chomsky book or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like it's just bollocks. Yeah, that's true. Did um, go somewhere else, you know? Yeah, fuck. I mean, go to a TED talk if you really want. Something I got into comedy because I love fucking around and I love yeah. laughing and making people laugh and it's meant to be a fuck around for stupid people. Yeah. And then for some reason it's gotten serious and people go, Actually, guys, I'm gonna fucking talk to you about mental health. And you go, yeah. Why don't you just fuck off? I know. That's why, I like, yeah. And my go-to is like, I love talking about like sex and dating mm. and relationships and stuff. And I remember a comic was like, you know, when you mature in your comedy a little bit more, you'll start to talk about real things. Well, the environment. Yeah, I, I don't know, but I'm like, you know what? The, the thing ice is, is melting. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, that's but make a good joke about it. People want to talk about it as well. Like, the the more day to day relatable bullshit is like is shitty fucking dates and shitty relationship issues and mm. dumb stuff we deal with and problems in our family and stuff. And that's more of like relatable because more than that, like people just don't want to hear. Like, we get it. We fucking hear it all the time. I don't yeah. know. I am torn a little bit, but I know what you mean. I know, and, and there's a, yeah. there's a skill to it. But it is just like, you know, and I suppose the criticism of me saying that would be like, well, you're a white guy, so you just, of course, yeah, it's yeah, fuck yeah. around. But to them, I say, I get on public transport too. And, you know, <laughs> I, I've, you know. I've walked for buses. It's not fun. I get it. You get the struggle. Yeah, I get the struggle. You know exactly what <laughs> Meghan Markle went through. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, she was an actress, who <laughs> yeah. became, a bad actress who became a millionaire, who became a princess. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, we're back. <laughs> I know, fuck. I, I like, never would have thought. I feel like thought, Piers Morgan. <laughs> I never would have thought of all the guests I would have on that you and I would be the one deep diving into the I know, I know, I know. It's become a sort of... Yeah, I don't know. I just watched the uh, their Netflix doc the other night. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. just it was just like oh, them calling each other H and M. I was just like, please oh stop, my please god, like, I know. Someone fucking shoot me. Give yeah. me. Um, did you meet your wife pre or post comedy? Pre, which Pre- is good. Okay, so do you think what, what and what's her take been on this and you switching and being like, I want to do comedy and everything like? So no, actually, kind of around the same. So I've known her all my life. My um, our, our dads were best mates. Oh, so we've known, that's yeah, amazing. And so I've known her my whole life, and then we got together like nine, 2014, so nine years ago. Yeah. So I met her. Oh my god, were your dads so excited? 
Or did yeah, they no, her dad figure... died in 2014. Sadly. So he wasn't that excited. No, 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 exactly. But they were, um, yeah, my, yeah, definitely. It was like because there's like pictures of them together in like 1978. You that know, is really which we've got on our cool. wall and stuff, which is good. But oh, she, um, yeah, she's been very supportive, like just kind of almost too supportive where it's pressure Suspicious. where you go because she's like well at some point i'm going to retire because i don't want to work and you'll make money from comedy i'm like okay nice <laughs> which is great <laughs> belief great but then it's also pressure you know yeah but that is so nice to have someone like that who like yeah. fully believes in you yeah and wants to support you and everything I think, yeah she came to my first ever gig um Aww, that's cute yeah and then it's like also you just don't i'm so fortunate to meet someone before comedy i find people comedy's messy yeah. And then people start like, just like mates of mine who would be like, oh shit, I sent someone a DM at four in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After too many drinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not nothing bad, but still like, oh. Yeah. Maybe. Or like going home with audience members or comics hooking up it's with comics. It's not good. And you yeah, just, it's like, messy. you know, it's, I think in the 90s, whatever. Like yeah, yeah, now, yeah. I think it's just. Yeah. It's just so fucked. I, I do not envy the single people in comedy. Oh, my God. No. I think because also you can sleep with someone, you know, who becomes massive, ma ma whether you're male or female, and then they become massive and they're like, yeah. fuck this bitch. She, you know, I don't, I don't want her on my show or don't use her on that show. I won't yeah. come on your podcast, you know. And most comedians are psychotic people, you know? It's, yeah. There's a lot of mad people in comedy. It's insane. Does your wife think you've changed during, like, since you've done she it? She thinks I'm, like, calmer. I think it's... Oh, okay. I was a dick before comedy. I was Were a, you? Yeah, I was, I was really, like... It's just, I don't know. I was sort of scared, and I do, uh, uh, didn't know... I was always trying to prove myself. Because you didn't really have an identity. No. Like, this is who I am. I knew who I was, and I thought I'd make all my mates laugh, but I didn't, I didn't done anything. Yeah. And I was always trying to prove myself and be like, oh, I'm this guy and I have to show you. I'm, and then I did comedy and I went, oh, I've done it now. You know, I, yeah. I've, I've, yeah. Um, so I just sort of felt like it's calmed me in that. It's the most humbling thing. Yeah. Because it's the thing that oh my God, comedy it makes you is feel like better and worse than anything in the world, you know? Yeah. Because people you, don't get that outside no. of comedy. Because then, like, you explain it to someone and they go, like, relax. Mm. It's just jokes or it's just whatever. But you're like, no, this is actually devastating right now to me. Like, it's, Yeah. And it can change week to week. Yeah. You have weeks where you're like, I feel I have a certain shine to me, you know? Yeah. And then other weeks. Because you... It, it's you internalize everything so much that it does come out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like in Edinburgh, you can tell who's having a good Edinburgh oh, just yeah. by their posture from down the street. Fact. If it's going badly, it's like, hello. <laughs> and you're like, hi. You know, get away from yeah. I don't want to catch what you have. Oh, I was God. that guy, you know, in Edinburgh. Oh, like, I was that person yeah. in Edinburgh. I was on but the you were side of the street. <laughs> Uh, I was not in a great state emotionally and I was like yeah. on the side of the road sitting on some steps outside my venue and I was just having a really bad day Yeah. followed by a bunch of other bad days but I was just like in, not in a great place and I was like slumped over and I was on my phone and Helen Bauer I don't know if I told this on here before but Helen Bauer and Harriet Kemsley came up to me and they're like honey what's going on like what's wrong and i was just like i'm just it's really hard and i don't know and this is just a lot and both of them right away were like give us your flyer they started taking pictures and tweeting it out and putting it on their instagrams and i was like it's just so nice and to anyone else i'd be like oh yeah that's like nothing but it did mean yeah so yeah it does mean the in world that yeah, moment. and it's that. when you're backed by other comics or people just like fucking get how brutal it is of and, like, course or just who have your back when like if you come off a shitty gig or whatever i had my biggest bomb that i've had in so long at Vauxhall last weekend the mm. crowd just was not having me yeah and they were drunk and were you were, hosting no i was doing the oh, opening 20. Fuck, yeah and literally about 30 seconds in i was like this is it's, awful. it's not gonna work this and you know awful. because you know like getting back it's like but my stuff's kind of on the same thing as yeah. you know it's like yeah i've had that you, yeah the 30 seconds in you're like Shit. yeah and then i had to do it for 20 more minutes oh it's horrible and it was awful what's the what's the worst gig you've ever had i did a um I did a Christmas gig for uh, oh, like those are always firstly the worst. Yeah, there was like a steel factory or a print factory. They print laminate like it was like plastic, so they'd make like little key rings. Okay, you know, and stuff like that. And so I got booked for that. It wasn't even like good money for for what it was. Yeah, and I went there and I got them. There was a DJ who was going to play after me, and I said, "So, um, where's the mic?" And he goes, "Well, where's you? You need to bring a mic." And I was like, "No." And he was like, I've been worked in DJing for 30 years and I've never met a comedian who doesn't bring his own mic. And who has a mic? 
I, I've never heard of it. And I was like, no, it's never neither. happened. And we had this whole row and he's such a cunt to me. And um, he ended up lending me the mic. And then the guy was like, right. Oh, and he had a mic. Yeah, so he had a mic the whole time. So he what wouldn't let me his I know. dickhead. And all he needs mic. I thought it was like going, he didn't okay. have a mic. No, no, no. So oh. he had a mic. And it was just like it was in a conservative club. So like this but it had like a disco dance floor and then this old bar that was like seventies. And they're all sort of sat in the bar and then this guy he'd booked me, he was a comedy fan, but you know, he's like been tasked with probably draw a short store to organise the party. Yeah, yeah. They all fucking hate their lives. They hate him. They hate me. <laughs> and he just came up and he said, um, go on then. And I was like, no, you got to introduce me. He expected me to literally walk towards them with the mic while they were sat around different tables and just start. And I said, just introduce me. He's like, I love your right version of like walking yeah. towards them. But he gave, I remember him saying, New York, Red Richardson, dude, you know, we got a, c- c- a bit of comedy coming from Red Richardson. And you could tell instantly, like, what comedy? Who the fuck? Do you oh, and he God. handed me this cordless mic and I just walked along the dance floor oh, to no. them. And it just fucking bombing. How long were you doing this? I was going to do 45 minutes. Oh, love it. Nice he just and long. like fucking bombing this. Everyone just started like being a cunt. There was a guy there who was shouting abuse at me, and I'm like, well, what are you doing? So like, I don't even work here. I'm like, thing is, most of us would love not to be here. You chose to be here, you are. So yeah. had this whole argument together. I'll get back to him in a minute. But I got paid half before, and I said, this guy was like, mate, you fuck off. Just fuck off to me. And I'm like, I have to do my time, otherwise I don't get paid. Yeah. And this guy just went, Gary, fucking pay him. And so the guy came on to the dark floor and gave me the other half of my money. So you could fuck off. You so I could fuck off. And like, how far into your set? I think because I got to the point where I like sat at tables and I just was like, "How are you doing?" <laughs> oh and my stuff like God. that. It was so bad. It was you know you just feel every bone in your body. You know, you yeah. just like you could feel everything, and everything's so clear. And oh God, I ended up leaving. I walked past and there was the guy sat there and I was like, "Oh, it's the guy who fucking heckled me." And I was just like, "You're a cunt." And as I got closer to him, he's in a wheelchair, and I was just like, "Feel bad," but I was no, I was so angry, I was almost like, "Yeah, no, fuck <laughs> yeah. that." Victoria and I had this conversation <laughs> on on my podcast. Just because you're in a wheelchair or just because of whatever doesn't mean you can't be a fucking yeah, asshole. Exactly, like, I'm exactly. sorry, no. If you're a dickhead, but it was just sort of. Oh my god, that sounds awful. I in a way because he was big. As I walked past, I was like, "Is he gonna?" T-? In a way, I was at first so relieved he was in a wheelchair yeah, because I'm like, like do nothing, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carry on like that, I'll push you outside in the cold. <laughs> oh my god, that sounds fucking awful. And then, so it gets worse. I go to leave, and he goes, you should leave out the back because uh, they hate you. And I was like, yeah, I know they hate me. Yeah, I, no, I, was, oh, really? I was just there. Yeah. So I walk out the back and out the fire escape and they're all lined up smoking either side. Like waiting for you. No, they're no. Just going for fags outside. And so I walk. I thought you were like, this was like entrapment. They were like, you should go that no. way. And then they're just in a circle being like, we're going to kick this fucking guy. So I had to walk through them, eat like, you oh. know, like the opposite of, you know, when they do a pr- pr- like in sports, when someone yeah. comes out and it's like a victory parade. Like everyone does the guard of honor, it's called, I think. And I walked through and they start singing Make Way for the Shit com- Comedian uh, to the like theme of um, Prince Ali. It was like, Make Way for the Shit Comedian. And it was oh so God. bad. I bought a bottle of brandy from the shop in St. Neots. There was like a co op by the train station. Oh, yeah. And I just, you know, when you see in films and it's like an alcoholic drinks and you yeah. go, no one drinks like that when you drink there. <laughs> it was literally like that. I, I drained a whole bottle in an hour. You know, I was so oh like, my God. and I still feel it. I feel that feeling when I walk towards, and when I go back there, just walking yeah. towards them, knowing exactly what's going to happen. And I knew it was going to be bad, but I thought but maybe the, I can. You can feel a gig's going to go bad before Ugh. you get up there or within the first minute. But oftentimes before it happens, I did a big gig. It was like an Avalon gig with a bunch of people. Mm. We walked into the venue, even just how it was set up and how the front of house people were. And we got the rundown I was hosting. And then even the order they gave me. Yeah. I was like, this doesn't even make sense. They had like, you know, the middle person go on and do 20 minutes. You come on and do seven more minutes after them before the break. I'm like, why would I come on and... After someone does a great set, why would I come on and be like, so, uh, you guys having a good time? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, we were just like, this is going to be awful. All collectively knew before anyone had even gotten there, it was one of the worst gigs I've ever done. Yeah, yeah. Like, you just know. Oh, fuck, man. That sounds yeah, awful. Yeah, yeah. And, this, and, it and they paid you. Yeah, but it was still just like, you know, it, yeah, it was fucking, it was hard. And I, I would never do that again. 
like private shows or I like would. private I'd corporate. Yes, you would. We all. Yeah, I would just say that. I We're all do, sellout. I wouldn't do. I I probably do that gig again. Oh my god, that would be amazing. But not that exact one. You know? What if they were like, you know what? We want to do like a flashback to like you come back mm. and do it. Like, yeah, would you do that? Because no, they don't have the humor to see why that would be interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it'd be funny if you filmed it or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I'm going back to fucking. Yeah, but it was just, you know, because some people find it so offensive that you could think you were funny because the thought of it is. Yeah. I cringe sometimes. People go, what do you do? And I go, oh, stand up comedy. You I know? don't tell people. No. And I especially lie. if you're, I'm very proud of doing this for a living, but. Yeah. I also know to other people, you just sound like a dick. But you also, it's the follow up. So tell me a fucking joke. Yeah. And tell also, me a joke. Like, oh my God. there's also a thing of like, guys, so what happened was one point in my life, I thought, I am so funny. I should do this for yeah. a job. And so I did. And then it took, you know, and then and there's something actually horrifically about narcissistic that. about the oh, whole we're thing. All narcissists. Yeah. 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 And so, you know what I mean? It's just, I, I see comedians tweet and I'm like, you are mental. Oh, yeah. And that how is no one... I saw a comedian tweet the other day, won't name any names, <laughs> tweeted about giving a homeless man a tenner and then did a whole thread on an argument they had with someone on the train who probably didn't exist along with the homeless <laughs> yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. But who went, you shouldn't give homeless people money. And then in the thread, they explained why you should. So they could like be like, look what a good person I well, am. Well, yeah, and it's just like, one, just you giving a homeless person a tenner, you shouldn't tweet about that anyway. And two, yeah. don't drag out some imaginary fight where for yeah. some reason on public transport, you have the mind of someone who's had an hour to think about 140 characters. You know exactly. what I mean? Like everything you said yeah. sounded like you've written down. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, and no. that's when I stopped him. You're wrong there. Because of systemic educational... It's like, you don't fucking know yeah. these words unless you've got Google. Like, <laughs> Oh, my God. I once did a gig with Ian Sterling, and he was so lovely. I'd never worked mm. with him before. And we were walking away, and there was a homeless guy outside, and he gave the guy 20 quid. And we're like, you piece of shit. You're yeah. just doing that because we're watching. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But yeah. he's just actually a nice person. Um, so tell me something. Is there anything, because we have a few minutes left, anything that you want to change in your life that you are struggling with or have tried and failed at? I I think, um, what is it? Drinking less is a good one. Mm. I, I haven't had a drink for three weeks. I did dry January. And then the problem is when I drink, I just go on huge benders. Like, so. are you somebody who drinks quite often during the week or when you drink you go like I am drinking and this is like going hard this is it yeah but I would do that in the weeks you know what I mean so, my thing was like I didn't drink during the week but then if I went out on the weekend I'm like we're going like see, yeah. you, see you tomorrow I'm I love drinking it. on my own and stuff I don't get the stigma around that because I just think <laughs> you have no shame well, no I just I, I go out and you see people out on the night bus and you go is this better this is shit. I like, mean, yeah, fair. I go out, and when I finish a gig and I'm sober, and you get on a night bus and people scream, it's like, have some self-respect and just go home and drink yourself to death there <laughs> like a gentleman. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> fucking have some respect for your peers. And just... I think drinking just makes me cry and horny, so I just don't want to be alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> I'd rather fair be enough. in a club yeah. with some man I don't know. <laughs> well, fair enough. But no, so I want to cut, cut down that and do more exercise. That's so good. I'm trying to just, I haven't had a drink for three weeks. That's um, really good. You know, I don't think I'll, I will at some point drink again. But just get a different mentality around Mentality, because what I did in January, I was like, I'm going to do a month off and then I'm going to pick days to drink. Yeah. But then I pick those days and it becomes like four days of like incest. Yeah, I'll pick and, the days. Um, <clears> it's going to be every day. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then it's like Thursday, you start and I'm like ringing my mates going, I've got a movie idea, you know, <laughs> da, 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 da. and then Sunday I'm ringing him going, I think I'm going to kill myself. You know what I mean? like, you know? It's a slippery yeah, slope yeah. between feature film yeah, yeah, and yeah. killing yourself. Book your ticket to Hollywood and then, hey man, I'm just about to hey jump off a bridge. <laughs> Can you just drop off some rope to yeah, my house yeah, real quick? Yeah, yeah. Pick up my script when you're here. Yeah. <laughs> Tell them like R.I.P. in the yeah, credits. of course. There was no script. I lied. Um, it's just a diary entry. I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> idea for a movie. You're supposed to know what a friend yeah, <laughs> guy with <laughs> bad thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, full circle, yes. Yeah. Tell me something in your life that you hope never changes. Um, being able to do comedy. Mm. Yeah. yeah, just in general. If if Okay, so let me put this to you. If mm. you knew you were never going to blow up, you were never going to like really make it big, and every gig you had to do was kind of those tough gigs, road, being a road comic, struggling, would you still do it? If you could make a living to get by, yeah, yeah, doing I'd still, I still would. I mean, that's a grim thought. Yeah, 
It's horrible thought. I think that's the future of a lot of comics. But I don't think it's your future. <laughs> I don't think. I hope. I hope. No, it's not. Because there's not, You're but you know. Good. But there's, you know, there's other, you go, well, okay, look, not everyone's going to be fucking Kevin Hart. Yeah. You know, some no, of us. No, you but, can be a black man one yeah, day. Yeah, no, I'm if sure. If you put your mind to it, I'm, I have I'm the right you. height. I'm just <laughs> yeah. not the right uh, skin color. But, um, or talent level. But no, I, um, yeah, I, I would. I, I like to think there's other things to do, like writing jobs yeah. and stuff like that. So just creative outlet. Yeah, it's the best, especially like, you know, I don't know when I'm older, I think suddenly you get to 50 and you go, actually, I can't go to Stoke for 200 quid. You know, yeah. the train's 160. Um, yeah. There's no hotel. But I think you just, but but that's even as you get on in comedy, right? Mm. I used to be like, oh, you want me to travel two hours, pay for a hotel, yeah, yeah. go into debt to do a five minute unpaid spot to just prove of how course. good I am? I'll do that. But now I go, mm, no. And then I'm like, I'm only getting out of bed for how much? I'm just going to get Yeah, yeah, game. yeah. So yeah. it gets just, better. That changes, but like, yeah. But it's an amazing yeah. life. Like, you go, you know, my days are free. Yeah. And then I gig at night and it's fucking great. Sometimes I go, you know, when you do like a gig and you get into, and you're like, there's a queue outside and everyone's drunk and you walk through the city first and it's just people going, Bleh! and you're like, oh my God. Yeah. Sometimes with then I go, why am I doing this? This isn't good for you. you know? I have the opposite. When they're all like, Bleh! I'm like, I could be out there, but I get to go and perform and do all this stuff. That's and I true. would, it's better than making excuses for why I don't want to be yeah, out there. Doing yeah, that, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. No. I actually love putting my weekends just going, I can't go out to these fancy, expensive dinners. I can't go out to like club with you or whatever because I'm just fucking gigging and I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it wears on people sometimes when you can't. You're always the one, like you were saying earlier, that you have to say no all the time and then they just kind of stop asking. Yeah, yeah, basically. That's what it is. Basically. How long have you been in England for? Four, in a couple of days, like this weekend, it'll be four years. And you were Canada, Toronto. Uh, born in Vancouver, but lived in Toronto for six years. So that's where I started comedy. Vancouver. I I, have you ever yeah. been to British Columbia, is it called? Yeah, that's where I'm from. So Vancouver's no British Columbia. No way. Yeah. So you've seen bears and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I've looked, so I'm obsessed with that um, British Columbia because I've, I didn't, <laughs> it's a rainforest, did you know? Yeah. yeah. That's why, so people go, oh, how well, do you, you know, how I do you, <laughs> <laughs> have you seen bears? You yeah, know it's rainforest. Yeah, yeah. They also have mountains, but that's how yeah. all when it's when it's raining, that's when all the snow gets on the mountains, right? Yeah. So you have the Rocky Mountains. So people here go, Oh my god, how did you cope with like moving here and all the rain and everything? But it actually rains more in Vancouver than it does here. Okay. So I grew up with rain rain all the time. Whereas this is like, oh, it's drizzly, but it, it'll drizzle for like half an hour and then be fine. Mm. Whereas I've been home to visit in Vancouver and it has rained for two weeks straight. Yeah, okay. and it's incessant, and there's flooding, and you're just going like, "Fuck, yeah. I cannot handle." It. But yeah, it's, but that's why it's beautiful and green it's and incredible. Lush and like I follow Instagram accounts that are just about British Columbia because I just love. I go, "This looks amazing." Oh, I'll send you pictures. Yeah, up there, I'm like, because yeah, my parents. And are, you have sea wolves. Yeah, we have the sea wolves. They wall. swim. They that's swim. Where, that's where the sea bit comes from. Pam Anderson lives there. Yeah, she. Yeah, I that's where she was. She's uh, back. That's where she was scouted at a BC Lions game, our our American football style team, right? It's the CFL, Canadian yeah. Football League. But the she was jumping up and down on the Jumbotron and they just saw her like tits bouncing and they're like, She's gonna be a star and fucking Nice. Yeah, that's what happened. And then she Fuck. got a Playboy from that. Brilliant. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me on. What where can people find you? Where can people Um oh. at Red Ritz and Comedy? I have a special on YouTube called the Red Ritz and Special. Uh it's a comedy special. Amazing. And yeah. you have a podcast? Podcast with Bobby Mayer called The Year Is. Which Bobby is fantastic. He's great. A bit. Also Canadian. Also Canadian. Never seen a bear. Never seen a bear? No. Nope. He says they live too far out. Oh, I've seen bears. I've seen many bears. Okay. I've been like on trails where we go there. We can see a baby bear down there. That means mom is somewhere nearby. Fuck, we have to leave. Really? Whenever you see a baby bear, yeah, I, get, get at the first fuck out. I was like, oh my God, so cute. And my friend was like, uh uh, we got to go. Because if baby no bears way. there, like, we're in Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out of there. Yeah. Well, thank oh, you. Oh, wow. Thank Love you very it. much for having me. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.